Now, fire suppression is not the only effect that we have had on fire regimes of ecosystems in North America. In some cases, we have indirectly increased the frequency of fire. So people, of course, now start a lot of fires on purpose or by accident, and so we increase ignitions, but we have had more indirect effects on fire too through the spread of invasive species. And an example of this we can see in the Sonoran Desert. Now in the Sonoran Desert, fires are typically rare. You should be able to tell me why, um, but fire is not very common here. And so the plants and animals that live here aren't adapted to fire. However, recent invasion by a non-native uh, plant species, buffalo grass, uh, has caused an increase in the frequency of fires in these systems. And buffalo grass is adapted to fire. It also increases the fuel load in these uh, very sparse ecosystems by sort of filling in the gaps, which helps to spread the fire across the desert. Uh, and this is a big problem for a lot of these native desert plants that aren't adapted to fire. If you want to learn more about the buffalo grass invasion and its impacts on fire, you can click on the buffalo grass video uh, link at the top of the slide. Invasive grasses have increased the frequency of fire in other biomes as well. So this is an example looking at Mediterranean shrublands in California. Now, these are systems that are that have adapted to fire and fire already occurs relatively frequently maybe once every 25 years 15 to 25 years um, and in fact there's a lot of variation already in the frequency of fire across these landscapes and this variation leads to diver increased diversity uh, because sites that tend to burn more frequently will harbor different plants than the sites that tend to burn less frequently. Um, but for all of these sites, if fires become too frequent, then there just isn't enough time for the native shrubs which dominate the Mediterranean shrubland to recover from the last fire. So it takes generally 15 to 20 years for many of these plants to build up enough seeds in their seed bank if they, if they rely on reseeding or for resprouters, they need to build up resources uh, underground so that, that they can use those to resprout after a fire. And so it takes them a while to recover from the last fire. Uh, but in, unfortunately, invasive grasses uh, tend that some of these species tend to be better at dealing with higher frequency fires. So if a fire occurs too often on a site, the shrubs aren't able to recover, they won't set seed, and so as you can see in this landscape here where we're getting more frequent burns, it's actually more open because plants aren't reestablishing. And this leaves space available for those non-native weedy grasses. Uh, and furthermore, once those grasses get established, they are adapted to high frequencies of fire, and they also tend to encourage fire. They produce a lot of dry, dead uh, leaf litter that in the end of the growing season is going to just accumulate, and then it could easily burn um, if ignited. So what you end up with is two frequent fires, clear the landscape, allow those grasses to, those invasive grasses to establish them, themselves. Once they're established, they encourage fire, which tends to maintain them in that area and exclude the native species from reestablishing themselves. Because fire frequency, intensity, and the size of fires can be impacted by climatic conditions, we also can impact uh, the frequency, size, and intensity of fires through our impacts on the climate. And as climate changes, it's predicted that 
the fire regimes of many different ecosystems is going to change. And while not all systems will experience the same type of change, over the, for the most part, the sort of majority effect will be for many systems that the warmer and drier conditions that result from climate change will lead to longer fire seasons, which means more fires. And on top of that, the drier conditions from the warmer temperatures is also going to mean those fuels, the fuel load in these ecosystems will be drier themselves, and that is going to lead to more intense fires. And finally, a big impact that we're seeing of climate change, and it has been very apparent recently out in California, is that climate change induced droughts, uh, so increasing intensity of drought, can actually lead to large-scale die-off of forests. And if you have more dead trees because they died in droughts, either they directly died or they're weakened by droughts and that leads to them being attacked by bark beetles, which then kill them. Either way, you get more dead trees, which means those forests are more likely to burn and burn up at high intensity. And unfortunately, recently we have seen more larger and more intense fires in many places across the, uh, the world. Uh, California is just one example, as this picture shows here. Um, the the campfire uh, that killed, unfortunately, a lot of people. Um, but more recently, also in Australia, we've seen these huge fires uh, burning huge areas of land. Uh, and these fires have been attributed to warming temperatures and increased droughts that have uh, accompanied the climate change that we are currently experiencing and causing. So I want to end by talking a little bit more about the effects of fire on ecosystem processes, uh, like nutrient cycles, which has been the thing we've been focusing on for most of this last uh, section in the class. So fire or combustion of organic matter, living and dead, uh, will return carbon that was stored in the ecosystem back to the atmosphere. And if we look at the formula for combustion, which is just the burning up of organic matter, uh, you see that fuel plus oxygen uh, will lead to the release of CO2 and water. And this is essentially identical to what is happening in aerobic respiration. We have fuel, which is food, um, and in this case, respiration, the fuel is the same as the food. It's all carbohydrates. Um, with oxygen leads to the same release of CO2 and uh, water. So if combustion is like respiration, then it should be relatively clear that fire then also in an ecosystem basically can act like decomposition. It takes organic matter, nutrients, carbon that are locked up in that dead matter and releases them um, either back to the atmosphere in the, in the case of CO2 or potentially back into the soil in the case of, of nutrient, uh, nutrients like nitrogen. Now that can be good because released nutrients um, into the soil can be taken up by plants. So if, if the fire wasn't that big, it just sort of ate through the litter layer, um, then that may lead to an increase in nitrogen availability uh, for the plants to take up. But a lot of times, in, especially in very severe fires, a lot of those nutrients will be volatilized, and so they also will be lost to the atmosphere. And so one question that people are interested in is, well, what in the long term is the impact of fire on carbon and nitrogen, say in the soils, which store a lot of these things? And it seems, in fact, though, that most, in, in many systems, over time, Repeated fires, though they may increase nutrient availability, uh, 
um, in the short term, and they may increase carbon availability in the short term because the leftover stuff that didn't get completely burned, so you have charred material and ash, that can get incorporated into the soil. But over long terms, if you have repeated fires, this is probably going to lead to a reduction in the carbon and nitrogen stored in those soils. Um, and you can think of it this way, if that leaf litter and woody debris is continually being combusted and a lot of it is lost to the atmosphere, then there's gonna be a lot less carbon and nitrogen to get incorporated into the soil over time. Now, it's this, this question of what happens to carbon and nitrogen in the soil because of fire is not a simple question with a simple answer because there is some evidence that there are cases where repeated fire may actually increase the amounts of carbon and nitrogen in the soil. And in this case, it appears that some conifer forests may be positively impacted in this way. Um, but this is still something that people are trying to figure out and why exactly this is for some forests and not others is not known.